Hello world, Noah here. In this video, we're going to talk about variables in Kotlin because they are indeed quite different than in Java as far as how you declare and use them. Now, first of all, in Java, you're used to writing something like type name equals value. So for example, something like string uh, name equals Noah, like that. It's going to look a little bit different in Kotlin. The way that you'll do this is you'll write first the keyword val, then the name of your variable, then a colon, then the type of your variable, then an equal sign, and then the value. So to sort of write that out, you're going to write val name colon type equals value. That's how it looks. And at first glance, it might look a little bit confusing it might even look a little bit worse than Java, but give me a minute to explain some things and I think you'll come to appreciate it. So the first thing um, that we're going to note uh, is that the string has a uh, an underline and it's grayed out. And it tells us that this explicitly given type is redundant because Kotlin has a feature that a lot of other languages have, like for example, Swift, which is called type inference. And basically that means that Kotlin is smart enough to look at the type of a value and figure out what that variable type should be. So for example, it looks at this and says, okay, this is very clearly a string, so name should certainly be a string value. And so what that allows me to do is actually get rid of the type because Kotlin is smart enough to figure out that name should in fact be a string. So this type is actually not required. The only time it's required is when you don't actually give a value. So you can either write val name colon type. So for example, I could say age is an int, but I don't give it a value yet. And then I could also just say something like val name equals Noah, and it's smart enough to figure out that that uh, name is supposed to be a, a variable or it's supposed to be a string type like that. Okay. We'll come back in just a second to the capital I and in int, but before we get there, one thing that I need to note um, is that you can't actually change the value of this variable. You'll see that you'll get a red line there when I try to reassign it. And that's because when you declare something as a val, it's the Java, it's the Kotlin equivalent to declaring something as final in Java. So when you write val name equals value, that's the equivalent of writing final, uh, for example, final type name equals value. So you're essentially declaring it as final, which means that you're not allowed to reassign it. Now, if you want to be able to reassign the value, you'll change the val to a var. So for example, you could use var here instead. Now, the reason why I started with val and not var is because you'll find when you're writing code uh, that very often there are variables uh, that you don't want to reassign. This is when you're writing, you know, bigger projects, um, you know, with a lot of code in them. And oftentimes you'll have uh, variables that are short-lived. Uh, they might just be holding some sort of a value and you're not going to ever reassign them. You're just going to create them. They're going to hold a reference, you're gonna use them a couple times maybe, and that's all that you're gonna need them for. And so you'll find and actually that very often you don't need to reassign a value. And so in that case, you'll mark it as val. And the general idea in Kotlin is that you want to mark things as val unless you're definitely going to change them, in which case you would mark them as var. Because marking things as val is generally just a little bit safer because you know that no one's going to um, touch it, well, you or, or any other code that, that might call your code is not going to be able to change the value. It makes you, um, you know, a little more sure of, uh, of the integrity of your variables, you know, if the value is going to change or not. Um, and you can also get some speed boosts because if Kotlin knows that the value is never going to change, it can do um, some optimizations to your code uh, to make it just a little bit faster. So you'll find that you don't use final all too much in Java. You certainly do use it sometimes, but not a lot. You're going to use val quite a bit when you're working in Kotlin. And that's just a nice feature. By making it a keyword in Kotlin, um, you know, val versus var, uh, it just gets a lot more use than, you know, final being an extra added keyword in 
Java. Okay, so I'm going to delete this reassignment. This code is now valid, by the way, because this is a var I'm allowed to reassign. The only thing it's complaining about is that I'm not actually using uh, the variable name at all, so that's okay. But I'm going to delete this. I'm going to make name be a val because I'm not going to change my name, but I will let age be a var because my age certainly can um, change. Now you'll notice that age is declared as an int with a capital I. In Kotlin, there are no primitive types. So you'll remember in Java, the primitive types are uh, int, double, float, boolean, char, short, long, byte. Um, that's eight. There are eight types. So those are all eight of the primitive types in Java. Those are the ones that you write with a lowercase letter. They get highlighted because they're reserved words. Um, and you can't call any methods on them. So you remember in Java, you can't make, for example, you can't do, for example, uh, int x equals 1, and you can't just do x dot to string. Sorry, like that. You're not allowed to do that because x is a primitive type, and you can't call a method on a primitive type. So you can't do that. And you also can't make an array list of type int in Java. Um, you would have to do, you know, integer. You'd have to use the wrapper class in that case. And that was always kind of frustrating because you want to use the primitive types to get the speed benefits, but then you have to do all this work to go from primitive types to wrapper classes and back, and it really does sort of make a mess. Um, but in Kotlin, there are no primitive types. Everything is an object type. And the nice thing about that is that you get the speed benefits of a primitive type. So this is int. It's uh, still just as fast as a regular old int in Java, but you can actually call methods on it. So for example, I can call the toString method on this age variable. Now this is complaining because I haven't given age a value, um, but you know if I gave it a value, uh, you know then it would work, of course. But the point is I can call a method on this uh, age variable because it is in fact an object type. It's an integer, but integer is an object type. And this lets you do something kind of funky because you can do 10, um, for example, let's say I could print out like 10 dot two string like that. And that looks really weird, um, but 10 um, is a literal, it's an integer literal, it's an integer value. And I can call methods on integer values. So I can actually do this, it's perfectly legal. Um, it just looks a little bit weird like that. Um, but essentially the point is um, that there are no primitive types, and so you'll declare int with a capital I, double with a capital D, char with a capital C, so on and so forth. All of those get capital letters just like that, which is definitely, um, you know, a nice feature. And this is a var, so, you know, later on in the code, I'm going to say age equals 19, and I'm allowed to do that, of course, because it's a var, um, which is great and just complaining because I'm never changing the value of age. So maybe later on in the code, um, you know, I have a birthday and now I'm 20 years old. That's great. Um, okay. So uh, now at this point, just one last thing to mention about, about variables, and that has to do with um, printing them out or combining them inside of strings. Um, so I could go ahead and uh, say print ln, uh, my name is name, and I am age years old, like that. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so that it fits on the screen. Okay. This was always um, sort of an annoying feature in Java that you had to do the pluses, and you had to balance the quotation marks. Sometimes you put one too many or one too few, and you got to fix it and all that. It's kind of messy, um, but basically what you can do in Kotlin is some nice string interpolation. So you can go ahead and write a dollar sign and then curly braces, and you can put a an expression inside of there. So just like that. Just to show you really quick, I could write, um, you know, for example, one plus two, and uh, if I run this, it's going to print out three. So it's actually evaluating the expression 1 plus 2, and then it's putting it inside of the string. So I can say, like, uh, you know, the answer is 1 plus 2, like that, and it's going to say the answer is 3, because it's going to evaluate this 1 plus 2, and then it's going to stick it into the string. Right? So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm saying my name is, 
and it's going to evaluate the variable name, and then it's going to stick it into the string. Another nice thing is that since this expression is really simple, it's just, uh, you know, a variable, just name, I can actually omit the curly braces and just use a dollar sign. And I can do the same thing over here. Um, I can say dollar sign age, just like that. So this code looks a lot cleaner. And with the syntax highlighting, it's very clear as to what exactly is happening. Um, but if I run this, you'll see it says my name is Noah. And I'm, well, it says 20 years old. But if I get rid of that, then it'll be more accurate. And it'll say 19 years old. Um, so that's great. But essentially, the point is that it's a lot nicer to do string interpolation to print, uh, you know, to use strings that have variables inside of them because you can use this dollar sign notation to stick them in very nicely. Now, one last thing, and this is a teaser um, for the next episode, but if I declare, um, you know, person, and person is going to be a string, and then later on in the code, I go ahead and assign person to be null, you'll notice that I get an error. And this is very weird because in Java, the equivalent code would work perfectly fine. Now, why is this? In the next episode, we're going to talk about how null works in Kotlin because it's very different than in Java. Thanks for watching this video. As always, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment with what you want to learn. And if you like this video, hit the like button. Continue on through the series, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye for now.